everyone. Come and grab your seats. And I want to extend a hand towards Gay as she comes to minister to us this morning. Father, we just thank you so much for this amazing lady. God, we just thank you for her story, for her journey, and Lord, for uh, Lord, who you have been to her and through her on that journey. Lord, I know there is um, uh, Lord, so much that she has experienced, and uh, Lord, uh, good and bad. Uh, but Father, I just thank you, Lord, for how she has always walked with dignity and grace. Lord, for um, Lord for one uh, for others, Lord, that she's always Lord been there for others and ministered to others, Father. And Lord, as she now ministers to us, we pray, Lord, just your anointing upon her. Lord, that she would just feel free to share her heart, Lord, and uh, and be real with us this morning, be honest with us this morning. And Lord, just to release, Lord, just your, your grace upon us, Lord. Lord, uh, as she shares her story, and Lord, what you have shown her, Father, through her journey, Father. So we bless her in your name, and we receive her, Father God, and the word you've placed in her heart this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Everyone say Amen. 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 All yours. Wow. I have to have one of these. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, today I'm going to share a little bit about my journey over the last 10 years. And I probably haven't shared it publicly, I've shared it in groups, but um, today um, I'm going to share a little bit more in detail and what God has done for me. <clears throat> I'll better put my glasses on. Come on. Um, I um, googled how to do a sermon. <laughs> and it says you have to have a beginning, a middle and an end. I thought I would feel as if I was back in school in the classroom, you know? Okay, so I decided to get a few quotes. Hallelujah for Google, hey? <laughs> God is good with Google. Anyway, these are some quotes and you may know them. Um, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Is that right? Yeah, come on. There's another one. If life gives you lemons, keep them because, hey, free lemons. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is, when life gives you lemons, throw them back and ask for chocolate. <laughs> I kind of like that one. Yeah, yeah. And um, over the last few years, I've had a few lemons thrown at me. And um, sometimes I really didn't want chocolate, but it kind of didn't happen, you know. So firstly, um, I'd like to, I'm like Emma, the Passion Bible. Everybody needs a Passion Bible because it talks about the immense love of God, his immense love. And if, if nothing else that I say today, Remember, no matter what you go through, no matter what journey you walk through, God absolutely loves and adores, adores you. There are so many questions we ask when we're going through sorrow. But I've learned through my sorrow that God has never stopped loving me, never stopped blessing me, and never stopped ministering to me. And it's unfortunately often in the valleys that we find those gems of God's love. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read the first six verses of Psalms 139. You know all about me. And this is, this is from the Passion. I should have probably put it up, but I didn't. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul. And you understand every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. I've gone into my future. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. That's powerful. And in kindness, you follow behind me. To spare me from the harm of my past with your hand of love upon my life. You impart a blessing to me. 
This is just too wonderful, deep, and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. I mean, I've been really meditating on that one over the last few weeks, and it just blows me away how much Jesus loves me. And it blows me away that not every person on the planet Earth isn't walking with Jesus. His amazing love yeah. and what he, how much he thinks of us, every one of us. I've travelled to India and other parts of the world and I've seen poverty in extreme. But God loves them. They're, they're, just, as mar they're just as precious to him as we are here in New Zealand. Yeah. It's just mind-blowing. I now, um, I'll just turn the page. <laughs> I know what it is like to go through extreme grief and sorrow. And as I was preparing for today, I came across some passages that spoke to me. And I'm, I shared them with a couple of my friends and they thought they were cool, so that was good. One is about Mrs. Havisham. And Mrs. Havisham is um, from the Charles Dickens novel, um, Great Expectation. And I'm just going to read her little example of grief in life. Even the worst and most painful family experiences become part of our total identity. God had a plan in placing us in our particular families and cultures. And the more we know about our families, the more we know about ourselves and the more freedom we have to make decisions about how we want to live. If we ignore truth out of fear, we end up like Mrs. Havisham from Charles Dickens' novel Great Expectation. The daughter of a wealthy man, she received a letter on her wedding day at 8.40am that her husband-to-be was not coming. She stopped all clocks in the house at the precise time the letter arrived and spent the rest of her life in her bridal dress. It eventually turned yellow, wearing only one shoe since she had not yet put on the other at the time of the disaster. Even as an old lady, she remained crippled by the weight of that crushing blow. It was as if everything in the room and house had stopped. She decided to live in her past, not her present or future. Wow. That's tragic, eh? Hey? That's absolutely tragic. And the other one I want to say is this one here. Hopefully I'll say the name correctly. <laughs> Hence the song, It Is Well With Our Souls. So I'm going to read about Horatio. In 1870s, Horatio Spatford was a successful Chicago lawyer, a close friend of evangelist Dwight L. Moody. Spatford had invested heavily in real estate, but the Chicago fire of 1871 wiped out his holdings. His son had died shortly before the disaster. Spatford and his family desperately needed a rest. So in 1873, he planned a trip to Europe with his family and four daughters. Yet just before they set sail, a last minute business development forced Horatio to delay. Not wanting to ruin the family holiday, Spatford persuaded his family to go as planned. He would follow later. With this decided, Anna and her four daughters sailed to Europe while Spatford returned to Chicago. Their ship, however, collided with an English vessel and sank in only 12 minutes, claiming the lives of 226 people. Anna Spatford had stood bravely on the deck with her daughters Annie, Maggie, Bessie and Tanita, clinging desperately to her. Her last memory had been of her baby being torn violently from her arms by the force of the waters. Just nine days later, Spatford received a telegram from his wife in Wales. It read, saved alone. When Horatio Spatford made the ocean journey across to meet his grieving wife, 
He sailed near the place where his four daughters had sunk to the ocean depths. There in the midst of his sorrow, he wrote these unforgettable words to a hymn that have brought comfort to so many in grief. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. <coughs> Horatio, Mrs. Havensham's story trapped her in the past with all its baggage and pain. She chose to stay locked in the past. Horatio chose to look to God and prayed, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And I guess through my journey of life, I've seen people in both places. And it is so sad when we see the Mrs. Ha Miss Havishams stay locked into their past. God has given us a future. And while we're on this earth, let us always move forward. Because in our suffering, we only can grow if we allow him to. As I share some of my testimony this morning, I'm greatly aware that some of you may have been through your own suffering and loss at some stage. I hope that some of my story may be encouraging to you. My story begins with my 25-year-old daughter going on a ski trip. Her name was Genevieve, and probably still is Genevieve. A vibrant, joyful person who loved life, adventure, people, and had an awesome love for God. This is her story. <clears throat> On July 1997, she was a brilliant skier. She was 25, she'd been skiing for 15 years. We had a, sh um, a chalet down, um, down the Rupehu. We did a lot of ski. Okay, she had a ski accident. She, um, she fell on black ice, and black ice is ice you can't see. Um, I woke up this particular morning um, feeling agitated in my spirit. There was nothing for me to warrant that, but. I felt agitated in my spirit. I thought, Lord, what's going on? 2.30 in the afternoon, I got a phone call from Wanganui Hospital to say that my daughter, our daughter, had a ski accident and had been flown to Wanganui Hospital and we must come down now. <coughs> so we were living at the Mount that stage and with another group, with so another couple, we flew, we drove down to Wanganui Hospital. We arrived at about 12.30 in the a.m. in the morning. And I'll never forget this doctor. He was waiting in the corridor for us. He was a stoic doctor with black hair and this black beard. He had a little bit of grey in it. And I can still remember that. <laughs> and he greeted us. Well, he didn't greet us. He actually was head hanging low. And he said... I have very bad news for you. Your daughter has um, fractured her second and third vertebrae. Your life will change. She'll be in tractions for the next six to eight months. She may never walk again. And that was the news. And so here we're standing. We hadn't even seen her at this stage. And so we... Um, Obviously, we're just traumatized by this news. Then, um, I hadn't seen her, you know, like I said, I hadn't seen her, and so we walked into her room, and um, here she was, lying with tractions, wires, everything, you know, and head and thingies, and, and all she could do was just say, speak softly, and the only thing she says, is Ma, they've cut my new ski gear. 
to get it, to get it off me. And I thought, I'm going to say your mother's daughter. And, and so, um, and so that was a very bleak July night. And I remember the doctors pushing up a um, lazy boy chair, and I sat in that, and her dad was able to go and sleep in another place because he'd driven down. And um, and the night progressed, and I just remember sitting there and just praying. That's all I could do, and just hold her hand. And medical people came in and out during the course of the night. But at six o'clock in the morning, she said, Mum, Jesus has been into the hospital, into my room. Wow. And I said, what do you mean, Jean? And he said, she said to me, he touched my head and he touched my neck. And those of you who understand um, a broken neck or broken back or whatever they call it, is when a fracture happens, the head actually feels like it's sitting on the shoulder, so there's no movement, you know, like it's frozen. And so she said, he's touched my neck and he's touched my back of my neck. And her first words were, I have been healed. Wow. <laughs> and that's what she said to me. I have been healed. So I said, bring it on, girlfriend. And so the next thing, we had to have all these x-rays done the next day. So we, um, they spent, we spent three hours MRIs, CAT scan, and everything else that they could do. One o'clock in the afternoon, one o'clock th the afternoon of the, that day, so we met the Friday, this was Saturday, and um, we met the doctor again. She was back up in the ward. We met the doctor again. And um, same doctor, same stark face, and he just looked at us and he said, the fractures, there's nothing on the x-ray. Wow. Whatever has happened, is you can take your daughter home. Wow. So, her broken neck was healed miraculously. Wow. So we're just praising Jesus, thanking him yeah. for this amazing healing. And um, so with less than 12 hours, we were in the car taking this young woman, well, our daughter, home. And um, she, um, she took a month to recover. It was that they treated it as a bad bruise. But I think the thing that rocks my, blows me away was after one month, she went and saw a specialist. And this, and when I had to go and pick her up, because she still wasn't driving again, when I went and picked her up, she was sitting in the gutter, and it was a sunny day. And I said, oh, Bob, what are you doing in the gutter, sitting in the gutter? And she said, the doctor said to me, I should be a tetraplegic or dead. So God miraculously healed our Genevieve, this vibrant, wonderful woman. So we just praised God, thanking him, and just rejoicing. November 1998, she married the love of her life. We had a beautiful garden wedding. Um, and it was a beautiful day. Well, actually, no, it wasn't. It started to storm late in the afternoon. So it turned a little bit, you know, not so good. But anyway, it was a beautiful day. She was married for yet one year, and in 1999, told she was had cervical cancer. And I must admit, that's when the big why question does start to linger or sit on your shoulder. A year after, or some months after she um, was diagnosed, she had a dream. And in that dream, she said, Mum, I'm in a win-win situation. If I live, I win. I can be with my family and my husband and 
have children. If I die, I win because I go home to be with Jesus. And it's that hope. It's just, honestly, guys, if I've learned nothing else from this journey of life, it's the hope of Jesus. It's the hope of him. Because we're all going to leave this earth some way or another. It's all about him. It's got nothing to do, but our focus has to be on him. And she had that. She yeah. had that. A lot of people came and prayed, and we had many, many years of people praying for her. She ended up, um, her and her husband ended up, they said they'd travel the world, which they did. And while they were away, she got pregnant with um, a little baby, of course, and after about... 12 weeks, I think about 12, she lost this baby. <clears throat> and this little baby, we believe, was a little girl. And unfortunately, it brought the cancer back quite rapidly. I, um, she, they came back to New Zealand. I'm really giving you just the Reader's Digest version of this. <laughs> and um, I left, I, I stood down from my job, I was teaching in Australia, I stood down from my job for a year, my boss gave me that year off, and her husband and I nursed her for the last nine months of her life. But during her last days, she still smiled, she talked, she laughed, and she was an inspiration to so many people, whole communities, you know, just loved on her, because she she lived with joy. She lived with that hope. And on the 19th of October, 2009, at 5.45am, she went home to be with her Jesus. But as she was closing, closing in on um, her passing, she had a real heavenly experience where she just saw just an open heaven. And it was like, as her family, we were able to release her because we knew where she was going. We knew that she was going home. And some time after that, some weeks after that, I had a dream of Jen. And I saw her whole and healed. I saw her with her daughter. I saw her with Jesus. It was a very vivid dream. And, and I thought, oh, Lord, she's at home. Yeah, she on. always talked of having this faith of one day. She was very, very connected with the Lord. And so right now, even though I'm talking to you, I just feel that I just, I, it's just rejoicing knowing that as I'm talking to you about the Lord right now, she's rejoicing in heaven with her daughter. And she's, she's gone to see her grandparents and all those that have gone before, you know. And I get excited about that. But there's still that human side of me that still grieves and misses her terribly. She was my only daughter. And she had a little granddaughter. And I lost a little granddaughter as well. But God's blessed me. I've got these two amazing sons. But one of the things that was told to me during my journey was, and this really spoke to me, and I'm sure all of you guys know this, I'm a bit of a slow learner sometimes. <clears throat> this, very, this couple that knew us really, really well um, said to us, can we talk to you, Gay? This was just a few weeks before she passed, and it really spoke um, to me as a person, as a person and as a mother. She, and he said, I'm going to tell you a little story. What if, she died when she was 37, what if God came to you and said to you, Gay, I'm going to loan you a little girl. Now you must remember, Gay, she doesn't belong to you, she belongs to me but I'm going to loan her to you. And you're going to watch her grow and blossom. You're going to see her marry. You're going to see her have fun with her friends and enjoy life and embrace it. You're going to see all of that. But one day I'm going to say to you, 
gay. She belongs to me and I want her home. And I thought about that and I said to my friend, no, he cannot have her. He cannot have my Genevieve. And he said, but Gay, remember, he came to you and said, I loan you to her. She's not yours. She's always been mine. And I go back to Psalms 139. He formed her. He formed us in our mother's yeah. womb. He created us because we first belonged to him. And when he said this, it's probably been the, one of the most powerful things that have, that's really spoken to me. And I started to see life so differently. Do I grieve her, her anniversaries in a few weeks, in a few months? I went to her grave last week. That's that human side of her, you know? <clears throat> Even though I chose Horatio's journey, I was broken. I felt as if my heart had been ripped out. Sorrow gripped me. The scars of loss were etched on my heart. Tears flowed freely, it seemed for years and years. But deep within my being, I could sing the song, it is well, it is well with my soul. We often ask the why question. Jen had been miraculously healed of her broken neck. How um, then died um, of cancer. How do we make sense of this? But trying to find the answer, we often miss the point. There are many whys in life. We will never know the answers to in this life. Accepting the why question, may often prove elusive. I realised I had to make peace with the why question because it can mess with your head if you don't. Trusting in God in the face of anguish. My life was in total despair. It had turned upside down. Not only had I lost my daughter, a year later my darling mother died of dementia and a year later my marriage of over 40 years, I lost. Not only did grief overwhelm me, but frustration of not being able to make sense of it all. But yet in the book of Job, we read when in his depth of sorrow and despair, he made one of the most profound declarations of faith. Though he will slay me, Yet, I will trust him and hope in him. Job may not have understood what was happening to him and why, but he knew that God was good, loving and trustworthy. And we, you know, we've all heard people say, but if God's a good God, why does that happen? He is a good God. He will always be a good God and we can always trust him. You know, and through my journey, I've come to find that also, you know. I don't know what my future holds. None of us know. But one thing we can do is we can trust God and hope in him because he is all he says he is. Um, it's supposed to be, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah. Um, God helped me to trust in despair, to hope in my heartache, and to be joyful in my sorrow. Um, and what's that last scripture? Okay. <laughs> Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That's quite a powerful verse. Um, just
also in the next few minutes, um, I, I found a prayer. It's called a prayer of comfort. And um, I don't know where any, a lot of you are at today, you know. Some of you, um, I went to Sean's funeral on Friday. And, you know, it was very sad. You know, it was, it was sad. And um, I would like us all to stand. And I just wanted to pray this prayer of comfort over you. And you can just claim it. And um, maybe some of you are needing comfort. You might not be going through what I've been through. But if there's things in your life, just know that God is a God of comfort, no matter what. So can everybody stand, please? Um, I don't know why I'm telling you this. And I didn't know it was a condition. I had an amazing earthly father. I was very, very blessed. I had a lovely earthly father who truly, truly loved me. Um, he died in his mid-70s. And they say he died of a, a lung condition, of emphysema and other things that resulted with that. After we had had our father's funeral, I knew the doctor really well that um, took care of my dad through his journey. And he came to me and he said to me, Gay, I should not be telling you this, but your dad didn't die, father didn't die of emphysema. He died of a broken heart. And I said, but you can't die of a broken heart. He said, you actually you can, it's a medical condition, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, that, that threw me. And then I had to process that, you know, and I thought, God is near to the broken hearted. He wants to heal our broken hearts. He wants to comfort us. Now some of you here today might not be going through a loss of a loved one. It could be other things that's happened to you that's caused your heart to break. And I just know more than anything, he is so close to the broken hearted. He literally picked me up and just, I remember being in Burley Heads and um, with my sister, and it's a surf area, and it was, we found a picnic table. My, my marriage had just broken up. My mum had just died. Gina just died. This was all within two years. And I started to write these children's books, which did quite a bit of healing for me. But I remember sitting on this park bench with my sister, sobbing like I'd never sobbed before, and I knew that my heart was broken. I knew that my heart was broken, but I let Jesus in, and that's the reason I'm still alive today. Yeah. That's the only reason I'm standing here today. So, um... Let's put our hands on our heart. I think it's the left side, isn't it? <coughs> Comfort me with your love. Comfort me with your love, O oh God. Wrap me up in your strong embrace. Shelter me from the storm, O oh Lord. <coughs> Surround me in your tender care. By day I pour out my heartbreak to you. By night I give you my racing thoughts. In you I take refuge. In you I will not be afraid. <laughs> For you hold me strong. 
you hold me safe. Calm my fearful heart, O God. Still my anxious mind and soul. For all my life is found in you. All my being is given to you. All my hope begins in you. Come on, let's put our hands together for Gay. What a powerful word. Thank you for sharing the story. Isn't it incredibly powerful to hear the affirmation of the goodness of God, even from someone who's walked through some serious heartache, amen, and some serious loss, and all of us at some level can relate to that. I know. But to hear again affirm just the goodness and the grace of our Father, even in the midst of the hard things, even in the midst of the tragic things, God is a redeeming God. He is a good God. And look, before we close this morning, maybe you're here and you're not walking with that God. Right now, you're not sure where you're at with Him. Maybe, maybe you've never given your heart to the Lord. Maybe you have once, but you, you know you're not walking closely with Him. I just want to invite all of us today just to join in a simple prayer as we close, just to, to give God our journey, to invite Him into our journey and to receive Him into our lives again because He is good. And maybe like Miss Havisham, at some point you locked up and you locked God out because of the why, because you went through something so hard that you felt like you couldn't keep your journey with God as close as it used to be. You've held Him at arm's length this morning. I want to invite you to invite Him back in. Son, daughter, he loves you. And I want to give you an opportunity through this simple prayer. We're all just going to pray to invite him back in, to walk closely with him. And then we're going to have prayer ministry up the front available. But let's just bow our heads. Let's, let's pray. And I encourage you just to pray this out loud. But pray, you're not praying it to me, you're praying it to the Lord. Let's just put our focus fully on him right now. Come on, church, let's pray. Father. I thank you for sending your son to die on a cross for me. You understand suffering and you've seen my suffering. You knew me before I was born and you love me. And I invite you now to come close. Thank you that you forgive me for all my sin. Now come into my heart. Help me to walk closely with you for the rest of my journey. Because I know that you are good. And that you love me. No matter what. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just keep your eyes closed. Father, just release grace right now. Lord, just minister to hearts. Lord, we I just see a healing river just flowing into different ones' hearts, just healing grief and hurt and pain, that loss. And maybe you don't get the answer to your why, like Gay said, but God wants to heal your heart nonetheless. He wants to mend you and put you back together because He still has good purposes for you. He's still got good things in store for you. It's time to move forward. And hold on to hope that one day all will be revealed. But right now, to move forward, allow him to heal your heart. Lord, just heal hearts, heal lives. Help us on our journey. Lord, to remember that you are always good. And that you are close and that you are with us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we have prayer ministry people come on out the front? Those are available to pray this morning. I know Gay will... Uh, be willing to stand and pray with anyone as well. And I just want to invite you, if you have any prayer need in your life, come on up and receive that. Otherwise, there's tea and coffee uh, down the back. Stick around for a while. If you need to go, God bless you. Uh, enjoy the rest of the sunny afternoon.